welcome everyone to our webinar today with our guest, Richard Rube. I have known Richard for many years, ever since he was running Day Traders USA and Worldwide Traders in Irvine, California, uh, many years ago. Richard has been trading for 22 years, mostly focused on uh, futures markets. He trades a wide variety of time frames from uh, very short term intraday to uh, swinging uh, trades in multi month trends. Richard is joining us uh, today from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, he is going to uh, share his favorite trade and uh, some other information that he thinks uh, could be of interest to us. His topic today is my right hand trade. Richard, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ron. Take 500 a day to keep the job away. <laughs> SwissFT.com presents Futures Talk, live trade radio. My right hand trade happens to be my favorite trade and the way you find it on your chart system is to just look for a grouping of candles that looks like your mm -hmm. right hand. And I don't care whether you put your right hand up to your face and look at the palm of it or turn it around and look at the back of it. You're going to find five fingers which represent five candles in the pattern configuration you desire to enter short. And that consists of only three fifths of a collection of fingers. So you want to look, you want to be, be able to see three candles because the middle finger, that one we use to people that we don't like, is the fractal high that you want to short. Now you won't see the two lower highs on the right yet. You wait for those and you're too late. You have to enter the trade at the top of the wick of the tallest candle in the chart. And you don't want to enter too quick because it might just be a situation where that's not going to be, not going to end up being the top of the heap. Because you don't know until it finishes whether it's going to be the top of the heap or not. So. After it gets up there in the wick, and there's not much of a wick, and it starts pulling back, that's when you know, hey, this may be a right-hand trade short. And you wait until you see about a quarter of the wick, a quarter of the range of the candle at the top of the candle. That's when you want to think about entering. And and now this is, takes a little judgment. It it you have to try it ten or eleven times before you really get the confidence to know when that's where that sweet spot is. But take take my word for it. It's following two lower highs, and this positioning is unfolding right before your eyes. You get in short. And you know you're getting in the right if you're looking at one of your oscillators. Now, you know there's seven or eight oscillators. I use the relative strength indicator. I'm going to show you some charts later. Once you get in, you just relax and let those other two candles, your little finger, or your index finger and your thumb, if you're if the palm is facing you, if you look at the palm of your hand, the two right hands are on the right, and you actually know that this may be good. Now, I have a dream that I've been working on for quite some time. To help every aspiring trader who needs one reliable trade setup to signal where to enter. Now, there's a hundred different ways to get in a trade. We all know that, but we only need one because we want to be consistent. So I like this. I've been using this for a while. Before I even named it, I was using it. 
probably been using it for five years, certainly three or four, and uh, it just kind of works. We've, to get used to this and to be able to manage this, we have to get organized. So I believe in regimen, habit. I wake up every morning at 4.15 because I live in the Pacific time zone in Las Vegas, Nevada. And before that, I lived in California for 20 or 30 years. And now I first thought, oh, this is really early to get up, 4.15. That kind of destroys social life. Uh, but it's really good because nobody bothers me for three or four hours. Nobody else is up until eight o'clock. So it's really a good time to trade because why? Because it's when Europe and the United States are trading simultaneously and there's plenty of volume and plenty of momentum, except for the index futures, which kind of, you have to put off for an hour and a half because they're not gonna open for another hour and a half. There are 36 commodity futures instruments. And of those 36, there's about 15, 18 that have enough liquidity to trade regularly. Yeah, there may be more than that, but there's at least that many. So to help people better understand fi mar financial markets and learn, the Japanese candlesticks is essential. I recall back when I took my first trading course way back in 1998, they didn't even teach me what a chart was. I spent $5,000 and two, in two weeks uh, on learning how to look at level two, which I haven't done in like 20 years. That's all I got. But it sounded good, it felt good, and I was all excited and raring to go. Now, I got some more training a little bit later. How many of you can honestly say you can or know somebody who can read the mind of the market? If you can read the mind of the market, you probably aren't, you probably would not be here today because you've been reading the mind of the market, making plenty of money, and you don't need any more education. So getting to the point where you can say that you can read the mind of the market is where you want to be. And we can take you to that point if you have the focus, the energy, the deliberation and the stamina to stick with it till you got it. And the way you avoid it getting beat up and crashed down is to not even use money while you're learning. Just use a simulator or I like better is trading yesterday's data by downloading it on your computer and then trading it anytime you want and downloading whatever instrument you want to the trade because you don't didn't watch that instrument yesterday, so you don't know any how it traded. So you just trade it like it was, and you can stop and start that replay. You can speed that replay up to 500 times. I don't recommend 500, but certainly 10 times speed. That, that, that way you can look at an entire trading day in a tenth of the time it actually takes to unfold, which is 23 hours because the markets are open for 23 hours every day. I only trade futures. I don't know anything about stocks, options, or the Forex. I don't like Forex because I can't see volume. I have to have volume to trade. I must have an indicator who analyzes volume for me so I, I can see it. And I'll show you, I'll show it to you in a minute but we want to be able to read the mind of the market. And how we do it is learn to 
interpret Japanese candlesticks. So I've set up a regimen. I got two, actually, and I need a cycle. I need I need a daily. I need an hourly. I need a weekly. I said those backward, but on Saturday I do weekend research to trade into next week, and I come up with seven or eight charts seven or eight instruments that we can trade next week and we know which direction they're going to move next week and they they bear fruit seven out of ten times we have somewhere in the neighborhood of a a 70 percent 80 percent success rate win loss ratio so if we say that crude oil is bullish next week the probability of it being bullish in other words, moving up a point to a point and a half or two points. We won't get it all. We'll get some of it. It comes true. And it comes true by Wednesday. You don't have to wait till Friday. Wednesday's hump day. And it starts out on Sunday night and Monday. You get in it when you get finished with the initial balance, which occurs over the first four hours of the day. It actually occurs over the first hour of the trading day, and then it kind of lollygags after that for the next three or four hours. And being in the t time zone I am, I can trade at 7 o'clock at night on a Sunday between 7 and 9, but I'm going to go to bed at 9.45, so I, I, I don't want to put something on and hold it overnight. I, I don't sleep good when I do. I've done it a lot of times, and I, I just worry all night long. So I... I just uh, know what's going on, and and, and I can make a, a couple of bucks between seven and nine at night. Then I close my position, go to sleep like a baby, and get up at 4.15 in the morning, and I'm ready to trade at five. Now, myself and my spotter start working at five, and we've got two or three alerts by 5.15. And we're done with those by 5.45, and then we might be holding on to, to some of them, and even though we get sometimes five or six or seven alerts, we only really want to be in three instruments simultaneously because saying grace over three separate charts, and three separate trades is about all you can stand. It's called span of control. You studied it in college or late high school about how you can only manage about three people well. You have five people and it starts getting ugly and you have 17 or 20 people. And I talked to a friend this morning I've known for 15 years and he says, I've got 40. I said, what? You surely got some managers and he's got three. He has three managers. So he's saying grace over 40 people. I, I got I shred. I, I cringed. There's, you can't do that in trading because they're like supervising kittens. You ever tried to herd kittens? <laughs> There's a dozen instruments that you can trade really well out of those 36. So find two or three you really like. I got about five, but I don't trade them all at once. But I do try them. When I get when I get the when I get the the alert from my from my spotter. I put the trade on right where she tells me to do it. And then I hold it until it starts to back off against me or rise up against me if I'm short. Now here's those 36 instruments I'm talking about. There's eight categories in futures trading. That's all there is. Not, not 10,000 stocks like you got in the stock market. I haven't traded a stock since 2002. Maybe three. And I know it was two. And then my wife wanted me to trade Martha Stewart when she got out of jail. And I said, honey, you don't want to do that. You wanted to buy her stock four months before she got out of jail because we buy on rumor and we sell on news. If you wait till she gets out of jail, it's going to go downtown. But she says, oh, I want to trade it. I said, I don't have a stock trading account, dear. So I gave my friend Dan. Some of, you, some of you might know him. He spoke at Denver Trading Group, Dan Gibby. Mm -hmm. I gave him $5,000, said, buy some Martha Stewart and shut my wife up. He did, and it cost me $1,500. <clears throat>
He closed it out, sent me back $3,500. Now, here's that chart I was telling you about. We're just going to look at it in a minute. We're going to get you good and confused, and then we're going to come back and dissect it so that when you leave, you'll understand what you're looking at. Okay, here's my trading time between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., right in here. That's when I trade. And you see, I got one trade that per that time. This one right here is an oversold condition. This is a relative strength indicator that turns red when it goes over 70. And when it gets up to 80, you don't, you don't really want to short when it's only 70 because it's going to be a while before it comes down. But when it gets up there to 80 or 83 or 87 or 90, short that sucker because it's coming down. The rubber band is stretched so tight that it can't go any higher. So it's going to, the, the buy period is going to fail. It's going to become a short. Get in it. Now look at the two left-hand trades here. I mean, right-hand trades. Or the, this is a right-hand trade. Look at the two left-hand lower highs. Look at those little things down there, and this big old tall guy with 26,000 contracts traded by the time that thing ended. Now, you haven't seen these yet, but right here, when that wick comes down like that, I got the circle right around the wick. I wanted to enter right there. Right there. That's the sweet spot. And it was toward the end of the candle, by the way. And then we got a gap up here. And that's scary. You get in and all of a sudden your negative $40. And, and then it goes up to $50. And then it finally comes down and turns red and gets down here. And you get a little green on the machine. And then you just breathe a sigh of relief. So this, this thing might go down here for me. And if it never does make that new high up there, you know it's going to be a nice short. And you got to ride. It's just like that roller coaster. You crank up that hill and crank, 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 crank. You know how much noise it used to make. And you've been there. Then you get to the top of that hill and it just falls like a rock. Okay, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and 15, two hours. And you got yourself six or seven hundred. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not the trade I'm going to spend time talking about. This was one yesterday. The one I'm going to talk about is one that was uh, executed on the 2nd of December. And I got some more charts later. It gives you an idea. So here, here's a, here's a, that should say, that, yeah, it does. It says my left-hand trade. This is my left-hand trade. That's a buy signal because we were down here below 20. Not much below 20, but we were below 20. And it was stretched, the rubber band was stretched in the other direction. So we had a buy, we had a sell, I mean, and then a buy over the course of two hours, three hours. Okay, let's go on. So, what do we have to manage? We don't worry about our profit. We don't worry about our gains and losses. What we want to do is manage our risk. I have a video that I would love to show you, but it doesn't work very good. And I was afraid of that because Ron told me that uh, he didn't know how to make it work on uh, go to meeting. But let me tell you what it is. You can go look it up just as soon as we finish the, the thing. Go on to the web, get into uh, YouTube and look up Ford and Ferrari trailer and just watch. There's two of them. And then there's a four hour session with Ken Shelby. He passed away about 14 years ago, uh, but it, it's a terrific uh, interview with Ken. I mean, Carol, Carol Shelby. So it's about that movie, Ford and Ferrari. And that happens to be the last movie I've seen 
and it came out in November of 1919. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. My wife and I went. She even liked it. And she's not into racing because they didn't, they didn't, they didn't uh, have say, scenes where the the race cars are going around the track for three hours. They just had them for about five minutes and didn't bore anybody. It was a terrific movie, and Shelby was a king. He was a king. So now maybe it'll click. Maybe it'll work here. No, it's not going to work. Okay, so I've. I mentioned Spotter a couple of times, haven't I? Okay. If you don't have a trading partner today, recruit one. Find a partner that you can collaborate with. And then I found one 35 months ago. I just ran a little old ad on a Craigslist and said, help wanted, trading assistant. And this young woman, Call, um, wrote me back or re responded to my ad and we got we got to, to together and she just uh she's a certified public accountant not a trader all she wanted but she wanted to learn to trade and she had uh um been wanting to do it so she saw this ad she's been with me 35 months now and she finds five or six of the nicest trades every single day between 515 and 545. You can benefit from her wisdom uh, by joining us on Zoom Room Radio and Facebook and or uh, SwissFT.com. So we broadcast in both places. One is a a Zoom account, and the other one is just Facebook, and we only just spend five minutes in Facebook and come and go. But uh, we like Facebook because you can use your phone. So the spotter idea is really something precious mm -hmm. for you. We know that trading is a lonely business. You've all heard that before. And now I see you all going to Swiss FT. It's been about 10 of you so far got there. That's nice. So it's not active except for seven from five to seven in the morning because that's the sweet spot. That's the best trading time. Remember, that's when Europe and America are both trading simultaneously. So there's plenty of momentum. There's plenty of volume. Nothing going on now. Everything's shut down. Not not closed yet because the futures don't close for another four minutes, uh, five minutes and fourteen seconds. But having a spotter, just a trading partner. I've had a trading partner for 20 years. His name's Anthony Allen. And he's my age, and he's been with me since 2002. And we taught each other a lot over the years, and we took a lot of courses together, six or seven. And uh, we've had mentors coming out of your ears. I mean, Tom, Tom Busby, uh, mm -hmm. Bernie Mitchell, Tony Oz, Ray mm -hmm. Grant. Mm -hmm. uh, we all stopped at, I heard 17 clicks so far, and it's distracting me. No, I'm just teasing. Okay. So we've had a lot of mentors. Now, here's another video I want to show you, but it won't come up. Sorry. Okay. And and this is this video is simply Kenny Rogers, who we lost this year. God rest his soul. It's the gambler. You've got to listen to Kenny Rogers about 25 times sing that song, The Gambler. And then if you really like Kenny, you can watch the movie. You can find it right there free on YouTube. And it's just a beautiful ballad. If you like ballads, if you don't. But it, it, it's going to bring home what you've got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Stop the moment you smell danger. Don't wait until the danger shoves you off the cliff. And instead of having a seventeen, a uh, hundred and seven dollar loss, you have a fourteen hundred dollar loss. Don't let that happen to you. Manage your risk. That's rule number one. 
Okay, so now we just got through watching the uh, the, the Carol Shelby uh, movie. It's all about Carol Shelby. It's not about Henry Ford or even Ferrari. It's about it's about Carol and how he took Ford to the finish line. And Ford had never run in a race in Europe. He made made it happen for him. Let me go back. If I can figure out how to get back. So who is the best racer? Who is the best trader? The best risk manager, the best risk manager. That's who you want to be. You want to be their best risk master because you're the guy who's going to have a bank account when you're 70 with enough money in it that you never have to worry again. You won't be worried about whether your social security check comes or not because you've got money in the bank because you did the right thing between age 50 and 60. 50 and 70, 70 and 80, whatever. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure there's eight, there's 87 people in the room, and I'm sure some of you are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. So you know who you are and what you need to do so you end up being a rich old lady or a rich old man. So you don't have to worry about your Social Security check. Isn't that what you want? And so don't worry about making big bucks. Just worry about managing risk and letting it trickle in at $500 a day. Okay, now here's the chart that goes back to uh, December 2nd. So here's my trading time. These two yellow vertical lines, that's RVR's me, and that that's when I trade. And so when I forecast, I go after from the lowest low to the highest high, and I use a drawing tool I got from uh, a teacher, a mentor I had, and I love this drawing tool. And it, it, I, I use NinjaTrader, and I've been using NinjaTrader since 2004, and before that I used a thing called Strategy Runner, and I was fascinated by Strategy Runner because it was based on artificial intelligence and it was uh, crafted by a young woman, a little petite, five foot tall blonde woman that got her PhD in artificial intelligence in Israel and came over here and wrote this software and created an expert system. And I had heard, read about expert systems and artificial intelligence in textbooks because I knew James Martin. Dr. James Martin, who's father of information technology, wrote 100 books. His last book was called CyberCorp. He envisioned the cyber corporation back in 1985. Anyway, she wrote this piece of software. Strategy Runner was beautiful. I don't know how I found it. Oh, I know how I found it. I was walking around, I was walking around uh, Comdex with my 15-year-old friend who, uh, who, uh, uh, we got, you know, dressed up in a, you know, a blazer and, you know, actual pants with a crease in them. And he looked like a junior executive trainee, but he's only 15. Looked like he's 25 at the time. We walked around Comdex for one solid week, five days from six, from nine in the morning till six at night. War sells out, and then he became a centimillionaire when he took his company public in 1999, 2000, February 14th. And uh, we met this woman in her booth at Comdex. That's how I found Strategy Runner. And uh, it wasn't at a Trader's Expo or a money show. It was a Comdex. And and uh, Sheldon Adelson, who used to own it, Comdex here in Las Vegas. He actually passed away last week and he was about 90, 80. I don't remember. You know, he's a senior man. I don't know what his age was exactly, but he's been a pillar of this community since he ran Comdex and he built the Las Vegas Sands. And he owns casinos in Macau and quite a guy. So, uh, the artificial intelligence made NinjaTrader because they created another expert system. And why did I leave Strategy Runner? Because it would quit 
at four o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon when the market closed and not open up again in mid, until midnight when the DAX opened. Why the hell wasn't it open in the afternoon? I wanted to get right back in my trade. I hate holding over and paying overnight margin. I'll just get out and get back in because there's not that many big gaps that hurt you. I mean, sure, there, there are some gaps, but usually they get filled or try to get filled. And it, you just get right back in. If you've got a direction and you know your bias, you can trust it. Get out and get back in. And so you're, 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 you don't use overnight margin, you use interday margin. Note how uh, we, um, we have three triangles on top of each other here. The first one goes, from A to B and pulls back to 31% where there's actually an anchor there. There's a real live uh, wick down there that we tied to, and it was 31.8 instead of 34%, which close close enough for government work. And then we come, we got one here. This is my second imaginary coming down to 55%. And the third one down here is 78. 6%, but it's real difficult to get right on the six. You just can't, you can't get your software to actually get exactly where you want, but it's just a systematic wild ass guess anyway. So I use this. I know that the pullback is going to be 34%, 55% or 89%. And somewhere in between 55 and 89 is where I think it might wind up most of the time. When I say most, I mean something over 51%, right? Most. Not, not always, but sometimes. So you know that you're going to get this much, but you might get this much, and you could get this much, but you need to know how much you could get, so you know what to expect. And this is the this same this is the same chart I gave you earlier. My right hand. Oh, oh, did you miss that disclosure there? I'm warning you. You can lose your ass in trading futures. You can lose money. That's what that said. My right hand trade is very easy to identify. It forms from the tallest candle in the chart. It's a fractal high, it's a short, and I'm a bear. It's always a fractal high. There's me. And that's a thousand dollar salmon. It's my, it's the one blank by two lower highs on the left and two lower highs, most probably on the right. How do you find it? My right hand trade. Search for it. Did I hear that in a movie? There's about one an hour. Trading is not gambling. Trading is speculating speculating has brains now some gambling is a little bit more easy to read like hold them maybe 21 then roulette or slots or some of the other silly games over there but i've said it i've actually stood at a crap table somewhere around 10 hours in my life maybe 15 or 20 because i've been in casinos 100 times maybe 200 times in the last 40 years, but I've never played very much craps. I never could understand it. It's just too complicated for me. And one of my best friends is a croupier at a crap table, but I can't understand it even with a friend in a business. Now, this is supposed to be Kenny Rogers singing The Gambler, but you can't get it because of the software. Software is everything. So my right-hand trade is like fishing. May not find a fish today, but enjoy the sunshine. So get outside and enjoy the sunshine every day, or you're fishing or not. It's like hunting. You may not bag a bear today, but you enjoy the experience of being out there. It may not racing. You may not win the race today, but you enjoy the excitement. And trading 
is one of the most exciting things you can do from a chair. The early bird gets the worm. And here's another one of those charts I'm going to bypass because I'm a little behind schedule. In addition to candle interpretation, a trader needs a few tools, not too many. If you go look at the back end of your software, you right click on your chart, you'll go into your indicator reservoir and you'll find a hundred indicators in there. I bet you've only looked at about 20, but there's, eight, there's 80 more that you might not ever want to even test because there's just so many that worked back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s that may not be useful today, but nevertheless, they still are in there because they became uh, commonplace in our business. And you could use them if you wanted to and had somebody to teach you how. But I've learned from really getting intimate with maybe 35 that only about four or five are worthy of your getting knowledgeable about. And one of them is the relative strength. And another is volume. If you don't know what's going on with volume, you don't know anything. You're just trading in the dark. And that's why I won't do Forex. They won't tell me what volume is. They don't tell me how many currency pairs like the pound to the euro are going through. And, and the broker can screw you. I just don't like it. They can take your trade and wait for you to lose money and then stop you out. I just think it's a, I have my biases and that's one of them. I've never traded Forex. Oh, I'm sure I've set it up and I thought, oh, I can, I could use it to teach. No, nah, no, not really. And I was thinking that 10 years ago or five years ago because you could trade micro Forex. And now we can trade micro futures. And so we, that's what people new to the business should to gravitate toward. So relative strength, volume, and momentum indicators are essential. So you want to look at the MACD. You want to look at our relative strength and volume. And you need to look at two kinds of volume, discrete volume and Cumulative volume. Cumulative volume is what makes the world go around. And I'll show you that later. See, this is cumulative volume. Notice that big pile of green candles there. Up, 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 up. We're getting clear to the man. This 240,000 miles above the Earth right there. Now, how do you get home? Well, you slide down the, you slide down the avalanche. Shoot! In your home with money in your pocket. Now, you know that it's all, the rubber band's really tight up here and it's going to bust and you're going to go down because of this cumulative volume. See, each one of those white candles is added to the candle behind it. It's kind of like those Fibonacci numbers are added together, you know, to come up with new numbers, new ratios. You get up there. So you need a cumulative volume indicator. I have, I use one that I was given to me and it works on Ninja Trader 7, but I can't find one for Ninja Trader 8. And anybody knows it, it knows how I can get a, a Weiss wave for Ninja Trader 8, and I will be eternally grateful. Remember that entry occurs before you see those two left-hand lower highs. You have to learn to imagine certain conditions. I use my imagination to figure out what may happen so I can trade off of that. And when you when you set a stop, and uh, let's see if I can go back. When you set a stop up here, 
I don't think I mentioned it, but it has to be one tick above the high of that top wick, because if you put it right on the top of the wick, you might get stopped out when it goes up and makes a double top, and it does about 10 or 15% of the time. Because where we wait for this to go down like that, not all of them go straight down and they jiggle you around and, and you might and this and you might get stopped out here. And then because you're already overbought, you know it's going you know you can get back in, don't you? If you get stopped out, you get back in. You wait for the next candle, which is going to be a higher high. It may be over here somewhere and it's a higher high, but it since it's since we just went down here and kind of got got into this territory here it, it may go back up and make a higher high but don't look over here look over here and this is what it did you see it 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 went it went down and then back up and made a little bit higher high and then it came down a little bit more and made a new higher high in the volume area and it did it in the candles too so this is what we call reading Japanese candlesticks. And there's about 100 names for them. You can learn those names and come blue in the face with them, but there's only seven or eight you need to learn. And I've only told you about 2% of what you need to know. Entry occurs before, I, I, I gotta go forward. Now, I'm gonna invite you to, to conduct an exercise to benefit yourselves later today. Open up your software, find your favorite tradable instrument. Lay it out to where you can see one full day of trading and then circle the fractal highs on that chart. And you'll probably get about at least 10 and probably 14 to, to, to 20. Circle every one you see and then examine, examine, examine every circled fractal high. Learn how to spot the right hand trades, their fractal highs. That's all a right hand trade is. It's a fractal high. And a fractal is just a derivative of fraction. It's a piece of that OHLC, that open, high, low close of a candle. It's the highest one. In the, in the chart for now. You're always trading off the right hand, hard right edge. Alan Farley, 1999. He was one of the first instructors I heard refer to the hard right edge. In other words, the last candle you can see and you're wondering what the next candle is gonna look like. Well, if you know how to read Japanese candlesticks, you can probably figure that out from looking at the last 10 candles. And it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a, a monthly chart, a weekly chart, a daily chart, a four-hour chart, a two-hour chart, a one-hour chart, or a 15-minute chart. And don't go any lower than 15 minutes. Too much noise. Now, I mentioned the left-hand trade two or three times. It's just, it's just a, a buy signal instead of a sell signal. It happens at the bottom of the chart instead of the top of the chart. Not going to say too much about it because the rules are exactly the same, except they're the opposite. Now that is a oxymoron if I ever heard one. So remember to circle them and to, and to study this, because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do that exercise, this course, this two hours that you invested your time in, won't be useful for you. And then take 500 a day to keep the job away. Trading is as fun as racing or flying. And it's the most exciting activity you can do from a chair. Now let's discuss the methodology for my 15 minute trade. My friend, Anthony Allen, who's not able to be here today, he's uh, had some medical problems and he's getting some uh, therapy today, speech therapy, 
had a stroke. And so he's, he was, I was going to ask him to talk to you. He's got this baritone voice that you wouldn't believe it. He sounds, he's just sounds like a eloquent speaker. And it crushes me that he's, his speech is impeded. He, I was going to ask him to just talk about it. He taught me how to do it, and I just kept having trouble understanding it. And I asked, Hanson, I don't get it. And he said, well, Richard, here's what you do. And I, I've done it. But, I mean, he's the king, and I always deferred to him. He he would look at these charts. on the on, He would only he, – he's different than me. He only trades crude oil. He would never look at an S&P chart or a Euro chart or a coffee chart. He just refused. He stuck with crude oil for 15 years, 18 years. And uh, we used to trade that oil report, which changed so much when the oil crashed below zero back in April. And uh, he, uh, I, I should have, um, I got to get over here to a chart. And I'll come back to these. Okay, now what we want to do is look for gaps. Uh, a 15, the 15 minute trade is a gap trade. Now I'm not talking about a gap with four, 14 or 20 ticks. I'm talking about a gap with one tick. Okay, so when when this when this candle finishes, you can see there's no gap in between that close and that open. There's no gap between that close and that open. Actually, there is because this. All right. So my point is that if there is a gap, let's say here's a gap. This, there's a gap between this candle and that candle and that candle and this candle. And when there is a gap between that close on a bullish candle and this open on a bearish candle, and there's a gap between the close and the and the open. You you can't see a gap there. That's not a good example. This one, uh, okay, this one is. You see that close there and this open right here, and there's just a little gap right there. And if this was alive, I could draw a little yellow box on top of that, and you could see that the gap between that close and that open. That's what we're looking for. If there is a gap between this candle close and that candle open, you can anticipate the next candle being the opposite color of the preceding candle. And you can really easily get seven or eight ticks out of it. That's only 70 or $80. But if you go in with a three lot, and get seven or eight ticks by three, let's say three eighths is 24, $240, or going with a six lot. But let's not use too much of your capital. Let's just do a three lot and pick up 250 bucks. Three times eight is 240, that's the maximum. More likely get 80, 180, but 180 is plenty. Do that twice or three times a day and you got your 500 bucks. So there's two ways to trade that I've taught you. I only, only told you I was going to teach you about one. So now I've told you about two. Now we're going to go back. Uh, about four or five charts. Okay. Forward. I should have had that chart right here, but I had to. Now, I've said this before, but I actually wrote it here, and I want you to remember it. The reason we trade between 5 and 7 in the morning is not to um, drive you crazy. I, I just had one of, my, one of my potential students who happens to be my webmaster and has been working with my colleague in Switzerland with us for like a few months. He finally decided he wanted to become our uh, technical support person and do that job because now we're growing a little bit and he he wanted to learn to trade. So I 
I said, join the room at five o'clock in the morning. And he did, he came in and it messed his whole day up. So he was in there, but he, he told me today, he says, Richard, I'm, I'm going to have to figure out, you, you record these things. I'm going to have to, I'm going to watch the recording because it's too hard for him. Cause he does a lot of, in, a lot of work at seven or eight o'clock at night, maybe 10 o'clock at night. And then sometimes it takes him till midnight to finish some of these thinking jobs. And so getting up at five was for, uh, formidable for him. And it may be a problem for you. It was a problem for my grandson. He just couldn't get up that. And they want to go out and play, you know, he's 25. Now he's 30. But because he didn't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning, he hated trading. But that's what you do in the uh, Pacific time zone. If you want the early bird to get the worm, if you want that worm, you got to get up at 445, 415. I get up at 415 because it takes me an hour to get ready to trade. And the first trade could happen at five o'clock if I paid attention, but normally it's 515 when I get the first trade. And now I've begun to just uh, rely on my colleague to tell me what to do at 515, 520, 525. And I get three trades all at once between 520 and 525. And I've asked her to give me one every 15 minutes, but eh, it doesn't work that way. They all pile up on you. You get a euro, you get a silver, you get a gold, you get a natural gas, and you, and, uh, and you get an oil all at once. And it's too much, you can't handle them all. So you need a team. She can spot all those, but can you trade and manage the risk on five? Uh-uh. Manage your risk. How many times have I said that so far? I hope it's been seven. But we traded that time of day because Europe and America are trading simultaneously, and it's the best volume, the best momentum, and it's the best time. Because volume makes you money. Now, oil and gas move daily between five and seven also, and that's what started all this, because it was oil that got us started. My dad was in oil business. I'm from Oklahoma. If you haven't figured that out by now, I'm surprised, just because the way I talk funny. And uh, when he was about 18 or 19 years old, he went to Lake Maricopa, Venezuela, and opened that Mar Lake Maricopa down there. And because he went down there, he got a job with Gulf Oil Corporation. And because he did that isolated duty or that horrendous, it wasn't near as bad back then as it is today politically, but uh, it was a miserable environment down there because they've got a lot of swamps and it's right near the equator. So it rains all, and the weather's terrible. But anyway, he would go down there. And uh, he's down there about two or three years, and and uh, he wasn't, um, you know, a big uh, uh, um, oil man. He was more of a draftsman and uh, an, an analyst. He he would keep track of how much oil was pumped out of the uh, receptacles and put into the tanks and make sure that the inventories are right. It's just a paper push, pushing job, but. It, started him in old business so when i was seven years old he'd be my mother and i'd be taking him out to the airport to get on a little old dc3 with a big old logo on the the um either on the thing that sticks up in the air there it says golf i remember that like it was yesterday he'd be going about four days maybe maybe a week and uh he had 22 young geologists up there in Canada in the Klondike. If you don't know where the Klondike is, and I didn't either until recently, I heard him say it's as cold as a well digger's ass in a Klondike at least 75 times. But my point is that I didn't know where the Klondike was, and I wasn't even sure it was a real thing, but it is. And I have a friend who's been there, drove through it, and you go through it when you're, you're leaving Alberta and going into British Columbia, and I've got to go see it before I die. 
But he'd go up there to Calgary and he'd go on up there to the Klondike and these guys were unhappy. They were 22 or 23 years old and they just graduated from college a year ago and he's got them isolated. It's like being in the military in Tule, Greenland. Now, I've been there and done that, but not the Klondike. So these guys were ready to quit. So he flies that, that golf plane at DC-3, a Goonie Bird, uh, down to Fort Collins, Colorado, and Greeley, and talks to the dean of those two colleges and those two separate towns about 100 miles apart, and said, could, could my 22-year-olds come, come down here and go to your Saturday night dances? And the dean says, sure. I mean, all those co-eds wanted to meet young men that had already graduated from college, so they six of them got married. For a time there, I thought my dad was um, something else, but I finally figured it out. He won. Okay, no more stories. I await fractal high setup signals. I observe daily trade setup alerts. And these signals are on Facebook, Zoom Room Radio, Facebook. And you can write us at zoomroomradio at gmail.com or just go into swissft.com and go over to the trade alert tab or the trading tab and you can find us. But I was talking about indicators. The indicators are a dime a dozen. And there's only a, only a half a dozen or less that are worth anything. And I've named the ones that are good. But candles are a grand apiece. Learning how to interpret those candles is much more valuable than using these indicators, which 90% of lag. So limit the indicators. Limit. I'm getting close to the point in time where we ask for questions. Uh, I've already talked about some of these. Here's your relative strength, nice and big. You're looking for this condition to buy and this condition, excuse me, this condition to buy and this condition to sell. By the way, if you haven't already noticed it, I have dyslexia. I have attention deficit disorder and I'm, I'm mentally crippled. So it's been really hard for me to learn all this stuff so I can tell you about it. This is a beautiful chart because you can see that cumulative volume. There's so much volume there going up. That's the same chart. You've seen the same chart every time I showed you the chart. It's just that I emphasize different indicators, the two that I like. These two I like. I don't care much about this discrete volume. I don't care if it was 4,000 4, or 5,000 or 10,000. I don't care the discrete volume. I don't care whether it's a red or a green candle. What I care about is how much how much was accumulated. And that, that means when it gets up that high, it's going to crash and burn. And this is where you make your profit when it crashes. Shorts take 10% of the time to develop as longs. So here are some indicators that are important to know about and really study Fibonacci. That guy was a genius. He lived between 1180 and 1250, and he was 70 years old a thousand years ago. Come on, how did you live that long a thousand years ago? He must have been a sheltered fellow. He must have been had a lot of friends that took good care of him, and he traveled all the way from Italy to, to Egypt to study those pyramids, to figure out those numbers. Did you know that here in Western civilization, they were still using Roman numerals when he was alive. And he said, I can't deal with this. I can't do arithmetic with these numbers. So he went to Egypt to find the Arabic numbers that we use today. So Fibonacci was kind of significant in that. And uh, then, then another guy who I just love, he's another old codger. His name is Larry Pesavento, and he's spoken at Denver Trading Group probably three times, if not seven. So 
fibs are important to know. Pivots. Now, you need levels. And whether you use the Fibonacci series levels like dot thirty-eight and six one eight and seven eight six and those things, or whether you use the pivots is up to you. It's a toss-up. You just want to know where support and resistance is at the at, at, at multiple levels. And that's why I like the pivot series, because that's all those guys had in the in on the floor when they were down there in the pit. They had a little old number two pencil that was three inches long, and they had a little three by five pad. That's all the tools they had. And they ran their business with those two little old tools. They didn't have these grandiose computers with all these charts and all these indicators back in the 1950s or 40s or 20s or 80s even. Not until the 90s. And even computers in the 90s were crude compared to today. I'm talking 30 years, people. We've had so much movement in the ability to interpret these. Uh, but these things came along. Larry tells the story about how Gart, Gartley, which he just loves to talk about, Gartley 222, I'm sure you've heard that. And the reason he does is because the, the, the three, I think it's the three drive, it's, I, I use it, I use it with my geometry. He, uh, I use yellow, he uses red when he draws um, these uh, three drives. It goes, I'm not going to get into it much more, but I just, the guy is, he's brilliant. And he taught me that stuff back in 2003 when he spoke to Day Traders USA and told the story that he tells to still today. He tells the same story today that he did back then, but I didn't embrace it. I didn't learn anything. I heard about it. It was interesting, but it confused me because I'm slow on the uptake. So I didn't get it, and I didn't use it, and I didn't benefit from it. But now I'm back looking at it, and where my, uh, see these drawings here? These are crude compared to his, but they work, so I use them. But let's get back to these indicators. There are a dime a dozen, but candles are worth a grand a piece. Are you ready for some questions? I'm not quite ready, but I'm getting close. I'm really sorry I, I wasn't able to play the gambler music for you or show you that video, that short video on Ford and, Ford and Ferrari, but I invite you to go on YouTube and find it yourself. Just look up Ford and Ferrari and uh, you can even add the word trailer and it'll bring it up. There's two of them and they're both good. And they're each one, three minutes a piece. And the song is three, three minutes also. So these, the, the relative strength, this new relative strength indicator that I'm examining now, I don't know whether it's good or bad yet, but it doesn't look like mine. And therefore I don't know where I'm going to be able to use it, but I'm considering it. Volume and in this Y wave thing that gives me cumulative volume and those little yellow numbers because they are golden and I haven't taught you anything about them except pay attention to them because they signal a fractal high. That's where the fractal high prints, but you're going to be taking the trade before that number prints on it. So it's probably on the it's probably on the fractal high next to the fractal high that's forming right now because it's not on the forming candle. It it, it was probably printed I better go back and show you what I mean um, okay you see that 146 right there that was probably over here on this candle before the when that candle was king of the hill 15 minutes ago and then it promptly moved over there and it's bigger because of more accumulation between that candle and that candle this is not a candle it's a bar this is a candle now we used to use bar charts to trade with but they're so hard to see you can't see anything those little tits on there i never knew whether it should be on the left or the right i never got i never i started to trade in 1998 and candles were already on the street because they came out steve nissan wrote his book in two in 1993 so by 1998 his book was pretty commonplace so people were using candlesticks but there were a lot of old timers that still use bar charts and a lot of people that use candles but refer to everything as a bar. 
none of those guys could remember line charts. I remember line charts, but I I wasn't into trading futures then. I was in the maybe buying a stock or two back in the Okay. So everybody loses. You never can get through a day with having without having a little loss on one of your trades. Just keep them small and keep your your um winners about at least twice as much as your losers and you'll be okay because you want a you want a six you want a minimum of a 60% win 40% loss ratio but that's not what you want that's what you've got to have to stay in the game you want an 80% win and 20% loss ratio so your game plan is to start out with a 60% win ratio and move it up to a 70 and then up to an 80 to where you can say i'm a I'm a really big success. Now, this is what I would like for you to do tonight. I wouldn't wait till tomorrow. I would do it tonight. I would find a chart, any chart you got, I don't care what instrument it is, and go into it and circle every fractal high you can find. Now, what's the difference in a candle high if it's so this fractal here or this is a this is not really a fractal high because this one came up so quick but it was it was for its lifetime but this one dwarfed it right away so if this one wasn't here that would be a fractal high because it it has a wick that was higher than that candle that's what makes it a fractal high but they get wiped out they get they get used up they they're they're temporary. It's a transitory environment until it prints. And once it prints, it never moves again as long as it as long as it charts there. And this was a fractal high for 15 minutes, but this one came along and dwarfed it, and it got, it got the number. And so that number is not there when that candle is alive and moving. The candle's over here on that candle. I mean. 17 is over there on that candle while this one's alive and moving. So you're trading this, you're looking to get into this short while it's alive, of course. That's, I mean, I, I don't need to say that. You know that. But these yellow things, that's divergence. And when you have divergence starting at the bottom and ending at the top, it is a signal. And then when you're down here in in the RSI and you've got divergence in this, and this this divergence indicator works on a MACD or or a double stochastic, uh, maybe even a CCI. I'm not sure, but he's got it. He made it. RJ is his name. You can buy it for 250 bucks. If you don't have it, get it because it 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 leads you because it says divergence. And once I hear that, I'd be across the room getting a cup of coffee, and I I'm looking at 25 charts. I can't see them all. I can see 14, but I've got double charts underneath each other, and I can blow them up and look at them. And if I hear divergence, I come back and see which which instrument that was, because I know there's going to be a trade coming up within a minute. Because when it when you you when when you, your price diverges from um, volume, this stuff, when they go in opposite directions. I mean, if price is going up, shouldn't volume go up? Yeah, surely. But when they, but sometimes they they go the opposite and they diverge. Whenever there's divergence, expect rotation, expect reversal, expect at least a retrace. Typically, it's retrace if you're in an uptrend, and we've been in uptrends on several instruments. This is the S and P, so. Most of the charts I've shown you today are crude oil, and they're all 15 minute. So uh, divergence is one of the other indicators I I mentioned back there on that. Whoops, went the wrong way. You can tell we're almost done. You already saw the end. I didn't write divergence in here. Oh, there it is. Ah, I did. 
Okay, good. So you know that some of the trades you take will fail. Just let them let them fail quick. Don't don't try to save them. You can't save them. They've been shot in the aorta or the carotid artery. They're going to bleed out unless you can get a tourniquet between the top of the leg and 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 where the bullet hole went in. They, they, they're going to bleed out before you can save them. Same thing with trades. So if, there, if it looks like it will fail, it will fail. Get out of it. Exit. Lose $70, not $200. But you need you need to lose seventy dollars because you can't tell if it's going to be bad until it gets to be six or seven ticks. Usually, it's more like nine or eleven ticks. So, learn how to deal with it and make money on the winners and take the losers quick. Now, you've heard that from every teacher you ever heard talk. So, I'm not teaching anything new there. I do hope I'm reinforcing it and making sure you got it, but. Just use some of the tools that I handed you today. Now let's let's go um, there. Do this circling thing. Now let's see if I got some errors. I think some of you savvy of you, some of the savvy ones could probably um, see uh, some errors that I might have made. I mean, that might not be a fractal high. Yes, it is. It's got the 14 on top of it. this one right here. Uh, didn't circle that, of course, but it is a higher, no, it's a little bit lower low, lower high than this one. That's definitely a fractal high, but there's no number on it. So how do I know it's a fractal high? Well, it looks like it was a fractal high, but it didn't get a number? Well, that's, I don't know why it didn't get a number, but it did. It, it, but look at all these, how low they are, how, how little. Uh, this is a very awkward time to trade. 2100, this is the time of night that I tell you that I'm sitting there watching television between seven and nine at night, and I might take a trade because I got my software open. My software is always open, and always my wife when we're watching it too. Put that thing away. Let's watch the television. Because what I do is ask her what happened. I'm watching my screen, she's watching the television, and I miss something in a, in a scene on the tube, and I say, what'd they say? Shut up, Richard. My drivers, I drive a sink crazy. I'm like a little boy that asks too many questions. Okay, watch that Carol Shelby thing. That's a Carol Shelby interview. He's he was 86 or 88 years old when he did the interview, and he I think he passed away in 2003. But it's a good interview. He tells it like it was. The whole thing about Ford and about how he got involved and how he built that car and how he made better cars than Ford or General Motors or Toyota. I mean, he made muscle cars. And only a few people got them. I didn't get them. I wish I had. Okay, you guys are getting bored because you're going back to the website. That's great. I'm glad. All right, now let's see what else I got here. Oh, you're, you've been looking at that thing there. Okay, got it. Uh, where are we? Yeah, that's okay. Now I'll take a few questions if you have anything. Uh, let me open my questions. I, I Ron showed me how to open them up, but I haven't had any. So I do I have any? Uh, there's a couple comments on it, uh, Richard. One is that uh, the uh, uh, Chris says that the the uh, Weiss wave indicator is available on futures io that you were looking for okay so you may want to Chris, check that out thank uh, you Lori's asking what period rsi do you use uh let me uh give me a moment i i uh i have to look at my software to answer the question so uh let me see if i can get my software up i gotta move some stuff out of the way and i might have to take my uh, let me uh get this thing out of the way and just boot it up take me a minute one another question while i'm booting the software uh peter's asking he said so the right hand trade is uh a divergence trade question mark well 
not always because it's not always divergence it's just the fractal high trade i mean divergence only shows up about five or ten percent of the time maybe only three percent of the time it's a displacement trade because the because the the area between the fractal high and the lower highs the two lower highs on the left and the two lower highs on the right that's displaced okay so it's maybe you could call it a displacement trade but a divergence is a different different uh animal so my software is uh open now i can go into uh this chart here and open it up and uh uh that's not a good chart because it doesn't have uh here's one here's one so let's just open up the software and go into uh the prison we call this the prison breaker and i just love it uh so here's my parameters the overbuy region is 78.6 which is one of larry's fib numbers and the 21.4 is another piece of a fib number and produces that um but the period's only four and the the smoothing is 28 and that i've never touched or um, tinkered with since i got the software because it works and i've got that new software and uh if if you if you want to if you want me to i'll open it up and show you why i'm trying to figure out how to get it to work and the owner of the software is a really cool guy. His name is Zach. And Zach has some really good stuff. And we all should look at it. I just can't get a, I need a marriage between my RSI, this prison breaker thing that I know how to use and it works for me. And I want that super RSI that I bought from Zach to look just the same, but he's he, he's having trouble because I gave him all these parameters. My, uh, that, that I have for this because I can't and I know that Big Mike has that stuff on there and for like 12 years I've been a member of Futures IO back when it started out as Big Mike's room and he kept saying well you got to pay the hundred dollars Richard to get the good stuff and I just finally paid it about six months ago but I've, I've known about it for for 10 years so I'm just stubborn but even now I, I need a, I need somebody to teach me how to go find it. So if you want to write me and teach me how to go find it on Futures IO, so I can stick it on Ninja Trader Eight, I might start using Ninja Trader Eight regularly. But right now I just use it. I've got it all set up, but I can't use it because I don't have that expression breaker on it. Thank you, thank you, Chris. So uh, Richard uh, CV wants to know what the numbers are at the tops of your fractal highs. That comes from an indicator called Weiss Wave. W E I S W A V E, and he he passed away uh, during the last year. Also, his name I think you told me that, Ron. Do you remember when he passed away? Well, it's been a, David, probably uh, David Weiss. at least a month now, probably. Uh, yeah, David I think Weiss. the numbers represent the volume uh, traded. Oh yeah, I can between answer the, the pivot high and pivot low, and then they. He deletes, well, I think two zeros there, so that uh, what I'm looking at might be 600 contracts traded in that one swing. I don't use Weiss Wave, but uh, isn't that right, uh, Richard? Yeah, let me get to this chart. Right here, I can answer the question this way. See this 14? That stands for 14,000 contracts went through between the last number printed here and there. And you can hardly see it here. It's it's, it's Trivial. Now this one right here, this really counts. So the pivot high, or the pivot high right here on the top of that candle is 163,000 contracts. See, that was at 9:15 in the morning on the S&P. That's when it rallies big time. So you can think of Weiss wave as a swing volume versus a single bar volume that typically is used in a histogram. And this is what, that's what this is right here. That's a histogram. What is your source uh, for divergence, Lori wants? RJ. It's uh, capital R, capital J, A Y. Look him up on uh, just Googling. 
and he's a cool guy and he'll uh he'll sell you the software and it'll, it'll work on ninja trader seven and he has another one for ninja trader eight i haven't bought it yet because i haven't begun to use ninja trader eight sufficiently regularly to, to write the check he charges 250 for it and you get i have it on five computers I'm not here to sell software. I'm just here to give you some ideas to help you think on what you want, what you could do to improve your yourself in some way, shape, or form. But I know what I like because I've bought it and I've paid for it, and I like it. If I, I always shop at Costco because if I don't like whatever I buy there, I can take it back. And I had an earlier uh, question here. Let me just see if I can scroll back. I can't see him. Um, I've got it open, but I can't see him. I don't see. I see well, the one question. The question was, they, they'd like you to review your rules for the right-hand trade. Just kind of go through the step one, two, three, what your rules are, what you're looking for. Okay. Let me go back to the front of the, um, go back to that, that chart that I put on early. Here we go. Okay. Okay, here's a picture of it right here. Okay, this is a right-hand trade and this is the, uh, this is the fractal high. And that happens to be a value of 146,000, as indicated by the, the the cumulative histogram right here, cumulative volume. And the difference between discrete volume is it just measures the candle that is above. This adds up the volume from a series of candles going the same direction. It only does the histogram when you're in a trend. If you're not in a trend and it's just up and down, up and down, up and down every other candle, then you don't get the the the, the, the that. But so a a right hand trade has to have a lower two lower highs on the left and two lower highs on the right, and have the center candle be higher than all the rest. And the center candle will probably, but not always, wind up with a uh, Weiss wave number on top of it, but if you don't have the Weiss wave, uh, you're not going to see that number. And I don't know whether the Weiss wave is available on uh, Nav uh, Trade Navigator or MetaTrader or Thinkorswim or any of the other popular softwares because I only know Ninja Trader. So uh, where would you trigger your short then on that bar, or would you wait for the second bar? No, well, that's way too late. No, right here, 25% underneath the uh, the wick from this level here down to there, right there when that when that that's the open of that red candle. So at the open, after it got all the way down here to the end, and then back up to there, kind of at the time that candle is closing because. What, how that candle behaved is it was all red at one time. It opened here and went all the way down to the end of that wick, and it was one big old blob of red at one stage in its life, probably uh, up to the 12 or 14 minute, 12 or 13 minute. And then it it went back up. This probably formed early but you want to enter about 25 percent from the top when by say when i say 25 percent, i mean the range and the, the range starts here and ends down here and so this is the sweet spot to get short well that would be a green bar then at that point if it came back up i see a little red triangle on the bottom of the uh that one right there is that uh, where you went short i think so um 
Yeah. And then I got out down here. And then I. And what, uh, what told you to get out? Uh, well, uh, it started going back up against me right here. I didn't want to take. I didn't. I didn't want to take the. Uh, um, so you were not looking at any of your too indicators or anything at that it point. It was taking my money. I got out. It was taking my money. This 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 tail here. <laughs> I mean, it was down here, and and so you see that that's where I got out. This little arrow here that says you had a trade executed in this candle. But see that little blue thing right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The robo colors are working. I should mute my phone when I'm sitting in a presentation here. So do you, you see, can you see that little, um, um, where did I, it's right there, right in that wick, right there. There's a little blue thing right there to the left of my big fat red pointer. It's right there. That's where I got out. I get in here. Okay, another question on, uh, on the volume. Looks like Richard, uh, oh, would you explain the white volume bars versus the green and the red? So I think that's okay. the difference between no, the swing good... volume and the, the uh, individual histogram volume, I think, is that not? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let me go over here to my, um, okay, we'll go back to this live chart here. Let me get out of the, this dialog box and uh, go into this dialog box. This is my indicators. Um, this is a Weiss wave, and this is, uh, and that gives me the cumulative volume, the white and black, or the white and the gray. You see the gray over here? You can, this chart's not very good. I mean, it's not, it, uh, the gray, it, so I normally use gray charts, but recently since I've been working on Facebook, I set up the black ones, and then I use the black one for the, uh, for the, the talk. So the black and white, or the black and uh, white and gray, uh, are the the Weiss wave indicator that keeps track of cumulative volume. The red and green are discrete volume. And those are, they are, are this um, one right here, up, down volume. So it gives you a, a red candle for down volume and a green candle for up volume. And that's the indicator that does it. And I overlay those on top of each other so that I can see the the red and green candles inside the the gray and white candles. I don't want to use it in a separate panel for that. It takes up too much space. So I figured out my friend of mine uh, back in 2013 showed me how to do that. He said, yeah, just lay them on top of each other, overlay them. Okay. Yeah. That was wonderful. I never saw anybody uh, else do it. So Richard, we got a question from George on um, on your targeting. How do you decide on your target price? Those Fibonacci numbers. So, um, if I'm doing a retrace trade, uh, I I know I'm going to come down at least 34%. Well, sometimes it only comes down 21%, but I'm not likely to take that trade. But I'm thinking first, first you're going to get 34%, and that's that's what's right in this area. And then if it if it doesn't stop at 34 or it comes up like this and does this uh, retrace against you and then comes down and, and makes a new low here, then it's probably going to go down to 55. And it did. It got down to 55 on this candle right here before the end of the day. And then it then then the green guys, then the, the buyers came back in and 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 and, and dwarfed that candle and made that uh, uh bottoming tail huge. I didn't mean to change the chart, but 
it did change and it's still you're still looking at the same data did that answer your question and then if it doesn't stop at 55 it's going to go on down to 78.6 or then ultimately 89 percent or it actually could go down below 100 and then you you wouldn't be looking at a bullish chart tomorrow you'd be looking more at a bearish chart if you if you broke 100 percent retrace so then do you uh trail a stop then uh, uh to stay into the longer targets no nah. no i'm not that guy i don't have a focus for that i'm like a hummingbird i'm going to get my sugar out of a flower and now i get bored sucking on that flower and i'm 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 40 feet across the yard in another tree, sucking on another flower in a nanosecond or a picosecond. That's how a hummingbird is. But your target is just, just getting your $500 a day then. Well, and that takes me two or three trades. Yeah. Because I don't have the patience to sit through the retraces. I, I know that the chance I set up, yeah, notice this right here. Th this is my, um, oops, that's not going to work. I've got something open. Let me go back over to... But while uh, you got that chart up there, Richard, we got a question from Chris on uh, what is a moving average in your RSI pain? I, that one. I, don't, I don't even know. Let's go look and see. I've got I've to figure out how to get uh, this chart out of my way and go into the... There we go. That's what I needed to close so I could do some other stuff. Um, the RSI uh, is uh, right here, and the moving average is going to be um, in here somewhere. Uh, you see which one's the moving average? I don't even know which one it is right now. I haven't looked at this. Now you're asking me to dissect a cadaver here. Um, where's the moving average? Uh, maybe down here. Yeah, because it's got three colors in it. Okay. The moving average is pink, the average middle, and then the uh, uh, average lower and you see how it's got the white in the middle and uh that's um where's the white one right here that's the that's the white one the average upper so um i don't see how to i i don't see any That's a level. I don't see how you can change it. So you're looking for a value of the moving average. I don't really understand the question. I'm afraid I'm not answering. Yeah, it I think I think that's what he wants to to know is the, uh, the moving average. Um, Doug saying smooth twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, the smoothing is 28. It, it's always been a head scratcher for me because I'm 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 used to looking back 14 periods. I mean, a standard CCI look back period is 14, right? And so is the MACD and and, and most RSIs is 14 look back. This is only four. So that's the way it is. That's the way I use it, and that's what I do. I inherited it. Somebody gave it to me, and I since I didn't buy it, I don't have the manual. I don't know. All I can do is guess. But well, Todd is saying the moving, uh, the uh, smoothing is the moving average. The moving average is, uh, excuse me, the moving average is smoothing of 28. So uh, you guys saying that that's the uh, the the period of uh, the moving average? The look back period? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's twice the. As, and then twice times 14, 14, 14 is 28. So that's twice times 14 periods. It is the moving average. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
me see if there's another. Uh... So one of the questions here was, do, do you wait for a print of the Weiss wave volume no. before you would uh, take a... Uh, no, 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 you don't wait for that. I don't even, you know, let's go back to my friend Anthony. He can see things I don't see. I need to be, somebody needs to spoon feed me and draw me pictures to teach me. He is brilliant. His IQ is about 45 or 60 points above mine. Thank God for him because he taught me so much by just being patient with me and saying, Richard, you can figure it out. I'll, I'll help you. And he did. So I kind of know how to use it, but I don't know. I don't, my deductive reasoning is not like his. His is genius. I mean, the guy was in the Navy for six years. He went to college in San Diego and became a physicist, worked for General Dynamics for 10 years. And then he said, I'm sick of this. I'm going to go be a medical doctor. And he, and the AMA said, you're too old. We can't take you. He said, screw you. I'll go to Mexico and learn it. So he went to Guadalajara and studied medicine. He had he had 10, 10 foot high stack of textbooks because he, he, he had the English ones and the Spanish ones. And then halfway through the program, he matriculated back to the University of California at Irvine. And that gives you an idea of his IQ. I can't imagine it. And then he had delivered a thousand babies and retired. That's a, that's a few. Well, I think we're running out of questions, uh, Richard. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I I'm so glad you all showed up. Thank you for your attention. It was a joy speaking with you, and those were really really good questions. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Uh, by the way, the time that Richard was referring to is a Pacific Standard Time. Uh, the five o'clock there is a eight o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Well, actually, daylight time right now. Um, Eastern Daylight. So let me take a, a moment my to. Uh, do, yeah, my, uh, my my colleague my colleague that does the spotting that I referred to. She, she 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 lives in Arizona. She lives in. They don't ever change. They they never go on daylight savings time. In, in Arizona, that's true. They don't. Um, they stay on Mountain Time, 365 days. So before everyone leaves, I'd like to uh, announce our next uh, guest speakers. Uh, in uh, our next webinar, we have two very successful traders. Adrian and Julie Manz, M-A-N-Z. Uh, they're both uh, PhD psychologists, uh, experts in uh, statistics, got into trading while they were into college and have been trading ever since. So they're trading partners. Uh, their topic is elevate your trading game, learn the strategies and psychology that have fueled a two decade career in the markets. Um, and uh, what I've seen is that they they uh, have a multiple strategies. They'll probably talk about one or two of the strategies. And uh, I should have the announcement out. I have all the information. I should have the, the announcement out yet this evening. Um, Richard, we should say too that the, the use of the fractal, uh, you had mentioned the five bar fractal, uh, it is used differently by, by some people like Bill Williams has a five bar fractal uh, to define a, uh, a, a boundary of price action uh, for which a, he takes a breakout uh, trade. He triggers a, a breakout from the fractal and you're, t you're taking a, a retracement, a, a, a reversal, a trend reversal off the fractal. So, uh, it's interesting that uh, it can be used uh, for uh, uh, a different methodology altogether. But uh, but again, uh, Richard, thanks. Uh, you know, we appreciate your willingness to uh, share what you have found uh, works well for you. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending today and uh, have a great rest of your day and enjoy your weekend. Bye bye, everyone.